Hey guys, today's review is gonna be fast, short, and to the point. It's gonna be a little Swift. A little Swift Max G, which is what this electric moped from Swift is called. The Swift Max G. You got Swift, you got Max, and you got G for G-Force. I don't know. I'll test those assumptions later, but first I wanna stop and uh, show you what this has to offer. And I wanna start with the keys. Just like a car, insert the key, turn it right, that turns the moped on, and it goes into park mode. That's what that P represents. If you turn the throttle, nothing's happening, right? In park mode, that's a safety feature. If you hit the brake lever, it goes out of park mode and you're ready to rock and roll. But if you didn't wanna use these keys, take them out. You got this key fob. With this, you can lock it. And then if you move this even a little bit, this is what happens. <laughs> very, very loud. That is echoing throughout all time and eternity. But it just goes off for a couple seconds, shuts off. To turn that off, obviously just unlock it. It doesn't come on when you hit the unlock button. You have to hit this button. And there we go. So you can go keyless if you just wanna use this. Now if you put the key back in and you turn it left, it pops the seat open. You got some storage in here, not a lot in there, but you can fit like a couple water bottles in there. Moving around to the front, I do like this headlight. This is uh, very similar to the new, newest headlights on all their scooters. And you could turn that off or just have daytime or running lights. And then you also have dim and high beams. Down below that, you got two turn signals, which are built into the panel, which I just think looks pretty cool. In fact, this whole panel just is very smooth and kind of has this matte finish on it, which I like. But with the turn signals, if you click left here, that shows up on the screen. You do have to set this back to the zero position for it to turn off. Below the turn signals, you have a fender. It's not the nicest feeling, but that is covering some suspension. You have hydraulic suspension underneath there. It's kind of dark. It is dual hydraulic coming down. And then you got 10 by 2.5 inch road tires. And the nice thing about these tires is that they're more of a motorcycle tire. So the tread is very thick. And if you live in an area like I do with goat heads, you're not gonna have to worry about flat tires. I had a bunch of them stuck in here the other day and I just plucked them out. And then the brakes for the front wheel are disc. They're different on the back, which I'll talk about here in a second. But before I move away from the wheel, I wanted to show you the cool rims, which I just like that design. Coming into the cockpits, got some decent filling grips. Not super cushioned, but they do feel nice. On each grip, you have a mirror that you can adjust. You'll notice I don't have one on the right side because they sent me two left mirrors. On the left side, underneath the headlight and the turn signals, you got a horn. <laughs> Handlebars then dip down for the LCD screen, which is color displays battery life on the left, your trip odometer, and then indicates when your headlight's on. If you stop for more than a couple minutes, it will go back into park mode, just an FYI. On the right side, more of your headlight stuff that I talked about already, but underneath that is a button here, and that is your cruise control button, which I'll talk about later. And then you got a full twist throttle. The brake levers are humongous, just a massive lever. The right side engages the front wheel, the left side the rear. Moving down from the handlebars, you have another storage area. This is a hook, you can hook your bag. Below that, you have all of the, uh, like the serial number, some more information about the moped. But back up to the carrying compartments, I actually missed this until I got down lower, but that is a USB charge port. The space where your feet goes, there is a mat, and I wish they would've put some two-sided tape or glued that down because that does move around a little bit. Can be taken off if you don't wanna use it. You got plenty of room here for your feet. On the other side is the charge port, just spring-loaded. You got Swift on the side, cool logo. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but okay. They got a pretty large saddle and it is quite comfortable. I do like the saddle. Behind it, there's a rack. Looks like you can attach a basket on here if you wanted to. The tail light is connected underneath and it's actually very bright and big. And then you can add a license plate. Underneath the rack is some suspension. You got dual spring in the rear. And then you got the motor in the rear wheel, which I'll talk about in a second. Some reflectors around the back side. In the rear wheel, there's actually a drum brake. So you have disc in the front, and a drum in the rear. And then there's two styles of kickstands. So right now I have the double kickstand up, but if you wanted to put that up, you just roll it forward and then you can use the single side one. Well, that concludes the overview. Now let's see how this performs. And the first thing I wanna talk about is power. In the rear hub, there's only a 400 watt motor. And to give you a perspective, the electric XP Lite, which is electric's lightest e-bike, has a 350 watt motor. So you only have 50 more watts of power with this, which when you take weight into consideration, it's not the best. This weighs 160 pounds. The electric XP Lite is like 30 pounds. So the power to weight ratio isn't the best. And what that means is that you have a pretty slow acceleration. 
which honestly seems to be par with every electric moped that I've reviewed. They don't really gear these things to tear off the line. I guess the moped users of the world like a gentle start, and this is right on par for that. So what about power for climbing? Well, the other day I took it up to a half block long, 20% grade hill, and surprisingly, it took me to the top, which is very impressive when, again, you look at the power to weight ratio, 400 watt motor, carrying up 340 pounds. That's my weight combined with the mopeds. Lesson is, don't be fooled by the size of the motor. This has got some torque. The last thing I wanna talk about as far as power is speed. There's only one speed mode. I've got it on full throttle and a flat stretch of trail and I'm hitting 20 miles per hour, which is right on with the speed rating. Now, if you don't wanna hold the throttle down, if you hit that tool button, that kicks on the cruise control and now you can go hands free. Look at that, the balance on this is nice. Wow, that's actually very well balanced. Uh, before I move on from power, uh, I wanna talk about one thing that I'm, I'm not sure why these guys did what they did. And that is with the size of the motor. So I know from reviewing e-bikes that a 350 watt, even 500 watt motor is about yay big. This space where they got the motor is huge. It's like double that. And so they definitely have the ability to put in a bigger motor. I guess they wanted to keep this at 20 miles per hour. When you start going faster in speed, you limit where you can ride and you gotta register it and all that. But Swift. Listen to me now. Put a good old thousand watt motor in there. Heck, do dual motors. That would be a good time. Okay, so moving along, the next thing I wanna talk about is comforts. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the posture. It looks kinda of dorky and goofy, but leg is at a 90 degree angle, back is straight up, and I'm ready to travel the world. Seat is quite long, and so if you wanted to expand the cockpit, just scoot back. You got more of an aggressive posture now. If you don't like that, scoot up. You're more, you're more upright and tight. This is for you proper riders out there. But yeah, super comfortable posture. I like it. Now I'm a 5'11 guy and I looked to find a rider size rating and there wasn't one. With the large saddle and a lot of leg room in here, a lot of foot room, it can fit a variety of sizes. The thing it can do is carry a very heavy rider. It's got a capacity of 265 pounds. Now earlier, I already talked about the suspension and the road grade tires. And so let me just uh, run around here and try some different terrain, hop some curves, hit a few bumps on the trail and, uh, and let you know how it feels. Man, the quietness of this is pretty awesome. I've got no motor noise. Nothing is rattling around or scratching or grindy or anything. It's actually super solid. And then you go down to the tires and with those being road tires, they're actually very quiet too. All right, this is just kicking butt on this trail. I don't know if you can even tell, but I'm hitting some bumps and voice isn't fluctuating or, or shaking. Let me find a bigger bump now and see how it does. Let me just be stupid and go off this curb. I don't feel this is going to go well. Oh, that actually wasn't that bad. I wouldn't want to do that on a regular basis, but if you have to hop a six to seven inch curb, it doesn't rock you that bad. Now I do have some sidewalk lines, so let me just cruise on here. These are the nemesis for a lot of cheaper end vehicles. Yeah, that's not bad at all. You can hear them, but you can't feel them. And that's all I care about. The last thing with comfort that I want to talk about are the brakes and, woo, and how powerful they are. You do have to squeeze the levers pretty good for hard braking. As far as smoothness, very smooth. No shaking or vibrating when you hit them. Well, it has come down to the last thing you guys need to know about the Max G, and that is the battery size and range rating. All right, the range rating is 38 miles, and oh, oh, not cool. And the battery is here in the saddle, under the saddle, rather. The nice thing about this, about the battery, is if you hit the circuit breaker, unplug it, you can pull it out. It does take 10 hours to charge up. You got a hefty charge time. And the battery is a 20 amp hour, and they say you can charge it up to 500 times. It's got 500 charge cycles. And then when you don't want to go riding anymore, you just treat it like a rocking horse. Now, if you pick this up, when it arrives at your house, it pretty much comes fully assembled. All you have to do is pop open the seat, plug it in, add the rear view mirrors, and you're good to go. Now, when considering how this rides and fills and everything that you get, uh, and then you compare that to the price, I think it's a pretty good moped. I've tried three other mopeds, or reviewed them, and with each one of them, there's like popping and cracking. Like the ride is not as smooth and as solid as this. I'm pretty happy with the type of quality you get for $1,900. If you want more information, I've got the link to this in the description. If you have any questions about it, hit me up in the comments. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.